Hiya, hello, hello. Welcome back to Jen's Books. I hope that you've had a fantastic week. It's lovely to be back from my holiday. I've recorded a few videos in advance to make sure there was some content coming out. Um, but the good news is I've managed to read quite a few books while I was away, so I've got plenty to share with you. And there were some really good ones as well. As you saw in my previous video, I found it really difficult to know which books to take with me, but I picked some fantastic books and I managed to read more than I planned. So um, I'm looking forward to sharing those with you. Um, the first book I, or actually it's the last book I read, but the first one I wanted to mention, I have to include a photo here because I read it on my electronic reader, was The Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater, and that was published this year. This was a book that I was really, really looking forward to. It's basically told through the eyes of two different characters, a character called Roach who's really into true crime and another character called Laura who lost her mother to, um, uh, to, to a homicide when she was younger. And they're both working at the same bookshop, which is called Spines, which feels like, um, you know, very much like Waterstones, to be honest. Um, but uh, they really um, do not get on at all, these two characters. And, and it's a book about uh, misunderstanding. It's about uh, true crime. It's about stalking. It gets to a point to and there's a sort of sense of uh, tension throughout the, the book that for me, um, I, I never really found it completely realised, but there's definitely, you know, um, there's definitely tension there. You definitely get pulled along as these two characters kind of, their lives become more and more meshed, um, particularly through the eyes of Roach, who's kind of the, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say villain, because you kind of feel sympathetic for both characters, to be honest. They're both... Uh, troubled and they kind of switch places in a way um, sort of part way through the book. The only thing I found quite uh, challenging about them because the, the characters are both quite unlikable in, in many ways, in, intentionally so. Laura you feel a certain amount of sympathy for but she gets more and more kind of frayed as the time goes on and, and Roach is, she seems to be uh, intentionally designed to be kind of unlikable and, and creepy and I felt maybe a little bit a little bit too much I, I wish I could sympathize with her a little bit more um th there seemed to be uh, an indication that all people who were into true crime were um you know were kind of creepy and a bit odd and I don't think that's probably the case uh, but saying that that I really enjoyed the tension between the two characters and I like books about bookshops and um, there's lots of references to other books and reading in there which I really enjoyed uh, it was just I, I kept waiting for something to happen and and it 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 kind of does but I'd be really interesting to know whether you've read this actually what your thoughts are on it um I didn't not enjoy the book um but of the books that I read on my holidays it probably wasn't my my favorite but if you think that that's something that you might enjoy um then then certainly check it out um the next book that i read was um jeffrey eugen eugenides i'm not quite sure how to pronounce it i do apologize the virgin suicides which um i i wasn't sure whether i was going to take or not but i ended up reading just before i went away and this is a bit more of a classic novel it was published in 1993 but it's, it's one that's always cited in those kind of books you should read uh, lists and it's all about the deaths of five sisters the lisbon sisters who um who live in the neighborhood first of all cecilia um kills herself um and over the space of a year all five sisters and their lives and it's told through the male gaze and, and kind of in retrospect as well. The story sort of looked at 20 years on when the boys of the neighbourhood are still trying to come to terms and try to understand what actually happened to these five women. And so there's sort of an idea of the kind of collecting evidence to try and understand what happened. So they, they talk to witnesses. They have copies of um, letters and things and bits and pieces that they sort of use to underpin their argument as to to what happened to these five women the the thing i didn't really expect was how um how much dark humor there was in here um it was it was quite uh, a, an entertaining read alongside being you know quite uh, sad as well but there was a lot of humor there as well as these stories told through the male gaze of these young 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 sort of teenage boys um but yeah i really enjoyed it actually it's um it's made me want to read Middlesex, which I've had for a long time on my shelf. And I think probably 
I'm going to read that now. And if you haven't read it, I definitely would recommend this. Uh, you know, as I say, it's one of those books they always say you should read The Virgin Suicides. I can understand why now, having actually read it. And um, this story is quite fascinating. And the way it's told, as I say, we never really have answers. We never see anything through the eyes of the girls. Um, it's all through the male gaze of these young men in their neighbourhood. So really enjoyed that. I sort of devoured that. It was quite a quick read, which I wasn't expecting. Um, so that's one I would definitely recommend if you've not read it before. Um, the next book I read was <clears throat> The Last One at the Party by Bethany Clift. Those of you who aren't new to the channel will know how I feel about, uh, you know, apoc apocalyptic type texts. I really, really love a good apocalypse story. And this is one that I really, really enjoyed. Does it bring anything really new to the genre? But possibly not in some ways, but it kind of, if you like a good apocalyptic tale, if you like uh, The Death of Grass or Day of the Triffids, or I'm um, trying to think, there's so many sort of modern day examples as well, you'll probably enjoy this. Um, the Memory of Animals is one that I read most recently by Claire Fuller, which was fabulous. What I really did enjoy about this book, um, it's, it was published in 2022, is um, the, the character, the non-name narrator, who uh, who kind of behaves in more of a realistic way than I've read in some other sort of apocalyptic tales. She lives in London, so it's a, a, a London, England-based um, story, and there is a virus called 6DM, which is um, stands for six days maximum, because once you've got it, you die within six days. And suddenly, um, uh, you know, everyone she knows is gone and she's left but somehow she manages to survive the, you know the only person it appears in the whole of London and the way she reacts and the things she does seems quite um to me uh I can sort of identify a little bit there's a bit Bridget Jonesy about the way she reacts and she uh responds to this a trauma uh, in, in quite a sort of realistic way, I think, as opposed to some of the other books where people go off on grand uh, humanitarian gestures. <laughs> um, I quite liked the way she responded and her um, interaction with the world around her. Uh, she comes across a, a dog uh, that she takes with her on her tra travels called Lucky, who she calls Lucky, and it's about their journeys trying to make sense of this sort of new society and, and in the hopes that there are other people out there. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. You know, we get introductions into her past as well, so you continue going through her past, her husband, you know, how they met and the events. Uh, best friend Zav and what happened there and so you're sort of going to and fro between the two so we learn about how uh, and why she is who she is um, but I found it hugely enjoyable this particular book um, uh, the end um, wasn't my favourite bit but it was still good I, you know there was a twist in here that I could see coming probably miles away and you may do as well but that doesn't mean it detracted from the enjoyment of the book so I would say if you like a good uh, a, a apocalyptic novel and you're not too worried about it bringing whole new you know ideas or slant on it you'll really enjoy this if you like um you know entertaining female uh, narrators uh, you know who are sort of <clears throat> finding their way through <laughs> through the world in an unexpected way you'll enjoy this I, I found it hugely enjoyable anyway uh, so if particularly say if you like that kind of a, an end of world uh, you know novel you'll in, you'll enjoy that one definitely and there are some really vivid vividly terrifying things in here as well that there's humor in here um but there are hugely terrifying images that will stay with me for a long time so it's not lightweight there are awful things in here um but uh yeah i just i just really enjoyed it i gobbled it up i have to say in, in a couple of days and it kind of felt like a perfect introduction to holiday read um the the next book i started reading a few that have been really high on the uh, agenda so yellow face which has been everywhere you can't escape it i've still not read babel but this has made me want to read it so yellow face is by rebecca quang who you may know from babel which was all over the place last year and this book is all over the place this year and the story is about two writers one of which is incredibly successful and the other one who's kind of her her friend who feels quite jealous that they met and um, when they were studying and um athena's uh, career has rocketed off and hers she's found you know quite stymied and she's not getting where she wants to be 
and one night she goes out with um, Athena, uh, the name of our narrator is June Hayward um, and Athena is from Asian heritage um, which is kind of important to, to the novel and they go out and have a fantastic night and then Athena dies in a quite an awful way, I mean almost almost quite comedic in a way but an awful way um, on this night out and in a, a moment of not real clarity, of shock of what's happened, June picks up Athena's latest novel which nobody has seen apart from her and she decides to pass it off as her own. The difficulty being that even though she rewrites a lot of the work and she you know she makes changes to it, it is the story um, about uh, uh, the experiences of, of in, in Asian history um, and so they they she gets accused of, of sort of appropriation and the uh, publishers even get her to change her name to Juniper Song so give it a bit of um, uh, uh, ambiguous as to what her heritage is to kind of smooth things over a bit and the whole book is kind of about the publishing industry which I found really fascinating really interesting but also uh, this uh, insight into um, opportunity and um, oh, what's the word not prejudice but um, privilege the privilege that June has that she doesn't realize that she has in being a writer and uh, you know throughout the whole book we think she's going to get found out that, that they're going to realize there are clues along the way that that you know this novel this novel that, that sort of wins awards and does incredibly well might not actually be her especially as people know that there is a link between her and Athena um, but I found it really interesting. It's one of those books that's very multi-layered. There's a lot of tension there throughout because obviously we're waiting for her to get found out for this, this crime that she's committed. But it's one of those books that it left me with lots to think about. I think I'm going to be thinking about it for a long time. It was an enjoyable read and I I I found myself drawn in and my relationship with the nature has actually felt quite complicated. But there's so much to think about. Um, that, that, that came out of the book that I, I would definitely recommend it from that point of view, you know, thinking about privilege, thinking about appropriation and, and say anything about writers and uh, publishing industry I find fascinating. So do recommend this definitely. Um, if you've read Babel, you'll probably enjoy it. I've not read Babel, but I'm assuming, uh, you know, that, that the same writer you, you'd enjoy. Um, but yeah, it definitely gave me plenty to think about and chew over. It's one of those books that I think will stay with me for quite a long time, which some of the other books I've read won't do. Um, but this one really made me think and maybe question my own uh, opinions and my own views. Um, but yeah, yeah, again, definitely recommend it. I've read some real stonkers, I have to say. Um, the next book I read is one that's been on my uh, to read list for ages and I wasn't actually going to take it away with me but I managed to smuggle it in and um, which is Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens and this was actually a perfect holiday read because it's set in Mallorca and although I wasn't in Mallorca I was in a sort of hot I was in Greece so it was really hot and I could kind of feel the affinity and um, with that hot atmosphere and the location that came through so this is another book that was published last year and had loads of really positive critical acclaim it actually wasn't anything like I expected it to be for some reason I had this quite uh, clear view on what the book was going to be about and it wasn't at all but I did really really enjoy it so basically our narrator is a ghost called Blanca and she is living or not living haunting a monastery in in Mallorca and she's been there for centuries and as the book progresses we find out about the events that led to her death um, as well but she watches people come and go and love stories come and go but she's really lonely she's really isolated she hasn't met any other ghosts she seems to be the only one there and um, she's sort of finding ways to pass time as much as anything and then one day um, Frederick Chopin and uh, George Sand who's, who's a writer arrive with George's children and they go there for Chopin's health because he's not at all well and um, this love story launches and Blanca falls in love with George and um, and we find out about the family, we find about, about, about their background and it's again they're also isolated, they're in a country where they don't speak the language, they've gone there um, with good intentions for as a Chopin's health but everything kind of unravels a bit while they're there um, but I thought this was a really beautiful book. I really, really enjoyed it. I can understand why um, 
everyone enjoyed this one so much uh you know it, it it's like nothing i've read before um and as i say uh you know there, there was a lot going on here in, in terms of it going between past and present and and blank has this gift where she can see into people's uh futures as and their past so through that gift she tells us about the characters futures and pasts as well so again really really enjoyed it beautifully written really lovely prose um and uh yeah yeah again i can understand why this one has so much uh you know a positive press when it came out last year the next book is one that i bought for my son and then he's only read 30 pages and um, because he stood in games design so i thought this would be the perfect book for him which is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and this is by gabriel zevin and again this is one that you probably can't avoid you've probably seen everywhere i picked it up on the airport on the way through because i thought if i'm waiting for his copy to read i'm going to be waiting a long time so i gave up <laughs> and bought, bought my own copy um to read and this is it, this is a book that I avoided initially because um, I, I don't play computer games. I don't really know anything about computer gaming or computer game design other than what my son's told me. Um, so it's not one that, that I really had a high on my list. But because I've seen so much uh, positive press about it again and again, everybody sort of said it's one of the best books of 2022. You really need to read it. You don't need to know about games design. So I bought it. I bought it and I read it in two days, which is not bad actually because it's quite a chunky um, book as well. So it's the story about Sam and um, Sadie. And Sam is, uh, they meet when they're children. Sam has been in a really awful car accident. Sadie's sister is receiving treatment for cancer and they meet in the hospital and they develop this friendship that centres around gaming. And this is sort of in the 80s. They're kind of my generation, I think, really. And then they meet again in the 90s, um, both at different universities, but in the same area. Um, and they decide to design a game together. And what I really liked about this book, it kind of reminded me, I think if you liked A Little Life, this has similarities to that. It's, it's not as, it's not quite as grim as A Little Life. In, in, it isn't grim at all in, in that way. But it's all about the close relationship between these characters and, and the um, the miscommunications and the missed opportunities and the way their lives sort of intertwine and come in and out of each other's um, you know, importance as, as, as the years go by. The third character is Marks, who is Sam's um, campus roommate when they're at university. And the three of them start this company um, and, and go on to have lots of success creating computer games. But I didn't find the information about the cute computer games um, put me off at all. I think if you're into gaming and you know about those sorts of things and um, you'll probably get more out of it from that point of view but for me the close exploration of the relationships between those characters um made it a, a really enjoyable read i couldn't put it down actually um i couldn't put it down it felt so well observed um and you really feel for the characters and we get a really good insight into their point of views and the sort of things that that um you know that that lead to the missing opportunities it's told in third person point of view as well so we've got a bit more of a insight into into what's happening in the book but yeah really really recommend this if you've not read it because you're not into computer gaming don't let that put you off if you liked a little life i think you'll probably enjoy this it's it's say no way near as as difficult to read as a little life but there's that same almost saga of, of decades of friendship between these characters and the relationships they have and the, say the mistakes they make and the uh, miscommunications and missed opportunities as well as you know the successes and the love that they share as well it's about platonic friendship um, and how that can be so powerful in binding people together so definitely recommend this one as well so so far they've all been fantastic i think this is one of the reasons why um, I struggled a bit with Death of a Bookseller because the other books I'd read were so amazing um, that it, it wasn't a letdown, but it just I'd, I'd really been looking forward to reading it. And I think possibly um, it's not fair to read it against some of these other books. Um, the last book I read while I was away is um, The Doll's Alphabet by C Camilla Gradova. And I've mentioned her before. She wrote... Let me get the name right. Children of Paradise. Keep calling it Paradise, but Children of Paradise, which was long listed for the Women's Prize last year, which is probably, well, it is. It's my favourite book I read off the Women's List. I really enjoyed the Women's List. Um, but 
uh, I would say Children of Paradise was my absolute favourite. And, and if I could be a writer, this is the stuff that, that I would write. I write poetry, but if I could write, um, uh, you know, longer stuff. I write short stories as well. This is a collection of short stories, um, but they're weird and dark and um, speculative. And the ideas are just so amazing. Um, for example, uh, there's, there's um, a, a story that's written through from a man who's born half spider um, there's a man who tins all his belongings because he lost all his belongings on a long sea voyage and decides to tin everything next time he goes um, there's a young woman who marries the owner of a costume shop which is really gothic and dark it really reminded me of the night circus by Angela Carter not night circus magic toy shop by Angela Carter um, and there's that kind of uh, carnivalesque dark grim um uh just oh just i just love these stories they're amazing they did not uh, disappoint me at all if you've read the children of paradise or you like angela carter and you like that kind of magic realism sort of dark fairy tale um kind of stories uh, really evocative full of detail full of visual elements just beautifully written you'll enjoy Camilla Gridover, I'm sure you will, particularly if you like Angela Carter, which is probably one of the reasons why I love this collection. Um, I, I haven't found any fillers there. I've enjoyed them all from the first book where the woman discovers that she can unstitch her skin and become something else um, to all the way through. They're just uh, fabulous. And as I say, it's published in 2017. This is a Fitzcarraldo edition, which is always nice as well. Um, but if you like short stories, and as I say, if you like Angela Carter, this is one that's definitely worth checking out. I, I bought this off the strength of Children of Paradise and um, I was not disappointed. You know, uh, I just, they're just fantastic. So real mix of stuff again, lots of books that I've really wanted to read for a long time. Um, I managed to get through on holiday. Um, so. I hope that there are some recommendations there that, that maybe you can tell me what you thought, whether you've read or maybe there are books that um, you would recommend off the back of those. But a bit of a mix, as I say, historical, um, a contemporary computer games, uh, you know, Mallorca, uh, the end of the world, short stories, all sorts of things. I do like to read as widely as I can. So. Let me know what your thoughts are. Have you read any of those books? Have you got any of them? Are you intending to read them? I really love the little um, community that's building uh, around this channel of people telling me what their thoughts are in the books that they've read. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to come along for more recommendations. Um, the idea was that I was challenging myself to read 100 books in 2023. I, I need to do a totting up. I don't think I can be far off already and it's only August. Um, but do come along what well, we do other things as well we look at particular authors i pick random books off the shelf and give recommendations so come along but let me know your thoughts thank you again for watching and i'll see you again next week take care bye